Today on How It's Made. Washing machines. In the days before electricity, doing laundry was just plain hard work. The first electric washing machines were little more than a bucket with a motor attached. Fully automatic machines came about in the 1960s. But with rising concern for the environment, there are new designs that need less water and electricity to get the dirty job done. Most washing machines contain a circular tub to hold the laundry. But this model has a unique feature. A hexagon-shaped tub made from panels of laser-cut perforated stainless steel. The operator separates the cut panels and places one on a bending machine called a press brake. It forces the panel against the die, bending the edge. The operator repositions the panel for the next bend, repeating this until the six-sided shape is complete. Then an assembler attaches a hinged door to the tub's opening. That's where the laundry goes in. This inner tub is contained by another outer tub. To assemble it, a welder sets a stainless steel plate onto a welding fixture. Then he places the tub's main frame and slides in another steel plate to close it up. He clamps the tub firmly in place then spot welds it on each side so the pieces hold together. Next, he takes the tub over to a machine called a seam welder. There, an electrode wheel travels all along the tub's edge, welding together the front and back panels to the main frame. the use of a robotic welding arm to build the machine's 24 by 27 inch steel base. A concrete counterweight mounted on the outer tub side prevents the machine from shaking too much when it's in operation. Next, an assembler attaches a pressure tube and a sump hose to draw the used water out of the machine. He seals both tubes with a watertight adhesive. Now he can install the suspension struts that support the outer tub, one at each corner of the base. A single electric motor powers the whole machine. It's set on the machine's underside on an adjustable pivot shaft. With the motor in place, assemblers now turn over the completed outer tub and lower it into position on its base. They connect the support struts on all four sides and then push the tub to make sure the struts align properly and keep the machine balanced. Next, the inner tub is set into the outer tub. Workers insert a stainless steel shaft right through both tubs. A strip of watertight foam is set along the outer tub's perimeter to seal it before workers install a plastic bezel that keeps water from splashing out of the machine. Next, assemblers install the drive pulley onto the shaft that supports the inner tub. A drive belt connects the motor to the pulley, which rotates the shaft and the inner tub that it supports. Now they slide a stainless steel outer cabinet onto the base that covers the tubs. It contains a control board, the brain of the washing machine. The assembler sets the lid into place, and the machine is complete. The control board wiring is located on the underside of the lid. That's also where the valves that dispense detergent, bleach, and softener are. Before it leaves the plant, a member of the quality control team tests it out with a load of soiled laundry. According to the manufacturers, the unique shape of the inner tub is the key to making this a lean, green washing machine that requires less water, less detergent, and less energy to get the job done.
There's been a lot of water under the bridge since the days of those first machines. They've sure come a long way.